Recently, I was inspired by a video Snifferish posted where they built an extremely detailed house in Minecraft and I really want to try something similar. However, they use the chisels and bits mod and I just can't be f***ed learning that shit. But I do know how to use block entities with the Axiom mod, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And well, first let me show you exactly how block entities work and the amazing things that you can do with them. Alright, holy shit, dude, I'm so excited for this. Honestly, this is the most excited I've been for a video in a fucking long time, all right? I just really want to thank Snifferish for posting such a cool video idea, and I'm sorry for basically just yoinking it <laughs> but yeah, so as explained before, uh, I'm going to be making this out of Axiom block entities. And so I'll show you exactly what these are right bloody now, okay? So you can see this thing, it looks like just a, basically a normal freaking log, okay? But the thing is, when you click this little block in the middle, uh, you can, yeah, you can move this thing wherever the hell you want. So you can see this thing is not aligned to the grid of Minecraft at all. In fact, I can just put it over here. I can put it in the ground. And now it got, dude, it gets even more insane, okay? The thing is, you can, ro you can rotate this bad boy on a 45 degree I can uh, uh, pfft, I can rotate it like that okay and then a whole pfft, dude a whole nother fucking layer opens up when you do this look at that this thing oh my god it's huge brother so yeah literally that it literally turns Minecraft into Blender, okay? So you can basically 3D model things. You can make some pretty insanely detailed stuff like I did tackle in one of my previous videos on my other channel where I built like a medieval interior with one of my friends and uh, man, that turned out pretty cool. But in this video, we're, man, we're taking it up a whole nother goddamn level, okay? And well, the first thing I want to do is actually just make this look like a normal piece of terrain. So I'm going to do a little bit of a landscaping time lapse. So um, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so first step was to establish a slight bit of an elevated backdrop behind where the house was to be situated. I also got some grass covering majority of the stone. I then felt some spruce trees would look quite nice as a forest backdrop, so I used Weld Edit's forest tool to get them added in. And the final step was to use the flora command to get heaps of grass placed everywhere. All right, and well, this is gonna be extremely dick difficult without, uh, you know, a reference picture, okay? So I have not found a reference at all yet, and I feel like this is gonna take forever, but I'm kind of wanting like a, I don't know, like a modern bright cottage house. Yes, I like this. This is the style that I'm thinking. Oh, Bro, look at that. That looks so cool. Dude, it's gonna be so hard to find one that I like. God damn it, man. Like, this one does look pretty good. I want something that's not too crazy because, man, I'm not a complete degenerate, okay? I don't have 200 hours to spend on this fucking video. But I think this is just a little bit too plain, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so, yeah, uh, a little while later, I finally found my reference picture. However, it was not perfect. Well, um, actually, this is the original reference here. So the first thing I did was I flipped it horizontally, and then I also extended this area of the house as seen right here. So I've extended it out to be a little bit longer, and I've also added another one of these, like, roof parts. And yeah, so I think that is going to be probably the best reference picture that I can find for what I have in mind, at least. I mean, again, we're probably not going to be following this perfectly, but um, yeah, honestly, let's get started, okay? All right, and well, I've been sitting here for about five minutes now just thinking of how to actually start, but I think the best thing to do is to just get bloody into it, okay? All right, so we're going to start off with this front step here, which I think is about five blocks wide, if I'm being quite honest with you. Now, you might be wondering why I'm actually just using regular blocks instead of the Axiom blocks, and that's because, um, well, I do want to get like a bit of a frame laid out with these actual blocks just to kind of figure out the scale I want to go with and then I'll come back in and replace those blocks with some Axiom ones. So yeah, this is to kind of get a bit of a scale kind of figured out for this house, like how big I want this doorway to be, which that is pretty goddamn big. So I'm going to continue doing this. I'm going to build out the rest of this area of the house. So yeah, let's get started with the time lapse right now. All right, so continuing the block out of the house, I got the rest of the front created, leaving the cutouts for the window and the arch section towards the right of the house. Getting that done, I realized that the house was just way too big. Like, the whole impressive thing of this is that it's meant to be kind of like super detailed at the scale of the player. So I ended up redoing the whole thing twice actually to get it to the right scale. Okay, so here is the completed block out of the house. I'm actually really happy with the scale now. Like, this is looking a lot better. I mean, it's still bigger than your average Minecraft house, but, I mean, it's kind of meant to be. Like, you know, some of the doorways on these modern houses are just ridiculously big, so I feel like this is accurate. But yeah, so now we have this kind of, like, space to work with where we can start introducing some of the Axiom block entities. I keep calling it Axiom block entities, but all of these entities are actually possible to do and use in vanilla. The only annoying thing is that you have to use commands to, like, kind of place them and scale them. Axiom just makes them easier to use, basically. So essentially, this whole house is going to be vanilla compatible. Like, you could download this and explore it without any mods at all, which is the insane part of this. And so for this front door, well, I was actually just going to do that, but I can see with the reference, we actually have a little lip bit here. So what I'm actually going to do, and I'm going to create that little lip. Like, that's how detailed we're getting with this thing, okay? And that's where I'm actually kind of scared, because, like... 
I don't know how long this is actually going to take. And so a pretty big problem with these block entities is you can see once we get halfway into a block, it completely changes color. So there's a couple ways to get around that, like editing the brightness here of this. So we can turn the brightness on and we can just scale these up all the way. And that's going to fix that. Another thing that we can do is just, you know, obviously not have it go halfway in the block there. And I can just instead scale one of these faces like inwards so that it's actually like a squished block like that. So I'm probably going to do that for most of the blocks here. Something else we can do as well is just kind of scale it up. And I'm not going to be doing this a lot of the time because it does kind of stretch these textures. But with this smooth quartz, you can't really tell. So that's why I'm just going to kind of, you know, do it for this, I guess. So let's stretch that up all the way to the top. And now you can see we have this little lip bit where the actual door will start. Now we need to start actually getting the door built. And yeah, so <laughs> while I'm doing this, you can kind of see like the amount of detail you can get into with these block entities. And it's just kind of insane, honestly. And here is another annoying problem that I have to deal with with block entities. You can see we have this like glitching texture where two faces are basically the exact same. They're kind of like fighting to display each other and just flickering and it's a very annoying problem. So the way that we're going to deal with that, well in control and shift we can basically just scale this down really tiny and I'm just going to get it the tiniest bit past that point so that it's basically on the same layer but it's technically just a tiny bit in right well there is the frame of the door done so yeah i'm going to continue doing these two areas as a time lapse starting right now all right so what i did next was use some dark oak fences as the little cross beams that hold the windows which are of course made using some squished glass blocks i then moved on to modeling one of those circle doorknob things at full size using multiple pieces of deep slate walls i then added some extra bits that had actually attached to the door and then grouped it all together and scaled it down along with placing it on the door i also decided to add some extra steps up to the door just because I can pretty much. It was then time to move over to this gap on the left and start filling it out with a pretty intricate design. It was actually a lot more difficult than I'd thought to get everything symmetrical because we're working at a literal sub pixel layer. It's just a lot more difficult than normal Minecraft blocks. But once I'd gotten it all figured out, it was pretty easy to simply fill in every window and it's all done. All right, and so here is our front door and window so far. And uh, if I start walking closer, you can see just the amount of these freaking block entities we have already. But I'm actually really happy with how this is looking so far. Like that is just so detailed. And so we do still have quite a few details on this wall that we need to get done. Like we have a whole bunch of pot plants that are going to be scattered along here. We've got heaps of plants planted in front of this window. We also have like these lantern things that are going to be on either side of the door. And well, for these plants, I really don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't know if I should just use like the existing kind of plants that you can get. I mean, I could duplicate this to get it like a lot more kind of detailed looking like that. Like that looks pretty cool. For like the hedges over here, I think I will use oak leaves like this and I'll probably like, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe do something like this where I have multiple different sizes and kind of make like a blocky hedge like this and just kind of continue that all the way down. We do have a lot of different plant types as well that we're going to get to along with, yeah, those aforementioned lanterns and stuff. So I'm going to get started doing that right now. All bloody right. So first off, I continued extending these cute little plants along until reaching next to the steps where I switched to spruce saplings for a different look. I then began adding some pot plants at the front door. These were simply made with some bone blocks along with plonking a random plant inside. I then took a little extra time and modeled another one, this time with some actual dirt inside so it looks like a plant could actually live there. I then grouped all of these entities together to get a single pot that I then began placing all around the front entrance with all kinds of different plants inside like jungle saplings, blue orchids, tall grass, and even cherry blossoms. Next it was onto the lanterns which I kind of cheated by using just regular lanterns along with adding this beam thing here. Now, I know I said I'd use leaves here for these bushes, but I threw that out the window and just opted for heaps of oak saplings. Like there's probably 50 of these bad boys in here. Next, it was time to model the window that would be placed in just above these bushes and with it created, I just had to do a little bit of resizing to get it fitted in. I made one side angled and open and then added a bit of a frame around all of it too. Next, it was time to tackle this arch, which I have not been looking forward to. It actually ended up being a pretty massive pain in my ass because I wanted it to be like a perfect arch, but I just, I gave up on that pretty quickly. And so to sum it up, I pretty much just blocked out the main angles and then just smoothened between them to get a decent looking archway. Now it was time for a couple more pot plants. This time I added a nice little orange tulip bush on the left one and a bit of a lilac one on the right side. For this inside bit, I just copied another window and plonked it in and called it a day. All right, and holy crap, does this area look amazing. This is actually like insane. Like I truly did not think this build would look this good already. It's just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 
I'm obviously still not done with this outside bit. I've got some chairs and a table to add in here. But yeah, all of this so far has taken about three hours, which is pretty nuts, man. Like this, yeah, uh, it's it's been quite an arduous task so far. Like these windows are such a pain in the bumhole, man. And I still have like all of the roofs and everything to do. And I, man, I haven't even thought about the interior yet. So yeah, at this point, uh, what I'm going to do next is just finish up the rest of the details in this cute little area. And then I'm probably going to get started on the roofs because yeah, that is going to be... Pretty hard, I think. Um, so yeah, um, let's just get straight to it. All right, so first and bloody foremost, I got straight to work on a bit of an outdoor chair arrangement completely made out of stripped oak logs. After completing the legs and base of the chair, I worked on the back and armrests along with adding some nice comfy cushions. I then went straight into getting a table design built again out of stripped oak logs to make it feel like a set with the chairs. This one was pretty simple until I decided I wanted a second intricate shelf design. I then went on to placing them in along with some resizing to make them feel more to scale. I also slapped another pot plant on the table with some corn flowers. It was now time for the most dreaded part of the entire build, the roof. Holy crap was this a massive undertaking. Spoiler alert, just the front half ended up taking an hour and a goddamn half mate. So after spending about 20 minutes just getting the shape right, I grouped it together and worked on placing it along the front half of the house. I then moved on to the area above the arch, deciding on protruding it out from the surrounding wall so the roof would actually have something to sit on. I'd planned on having a circular window in here, which I regret greatly. Honestly, it wasn't actually that hard to get the circular shape, just a little bit finicky. Next it was onto this interesting little feature which was to be like a box that extends out of the roof and has some windows on which was probably the easiest part of the entire roof. I got to fixing the roof surrounding the box along with getting one actually on the box as well along with getting some more long pieces of quartz as framing. Next, it was time to build the modern style chimney which I actually had a lot of fun making mainly because it took like only 4 minutes. It was now onto by far the hardest part of the entire roof, getting this triangular area filled in with walls along with the supports under the roof here. My god did this suck actual ball sack, like I was almost reduced to tears here. After filling the rest of the gaps around the window I moved on to adding those same supports under all of the roofs. My god was this little roof here actually quite shit. It took a lot of fiddling, skewing the actual object and resizing to get it actually looking good and fitting. Now it was time to get the back half of the roof filled in, which was uh, quite a simple process thankfully. I just extended those roof tiles all the way down and originally copied a part of the other roof and tried fixing it, until giving up and just copying the whole thing and placing it in, along with getting it on the other side as well. All bloody right, and here is the house so far. Oh. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> like, holy crap, dude. This thing has turned out so much better than I thought it would. It's just actually crazy. Like, this thing looks like a real house, almost. Except for, like, these weird-looking bushes, I guess. So, yeah, that pretty much marks the completion of the entire exterior of the house. I mean, if you don't include the details, that should kind of be back here. Uh, honestly, I don't know what should be here. So, dude, the back of the build, we just don't talk about it, okay? <laughs> but we do still have a lot of work on the inside here. This thing is bare bloody bone dry, okay? We've got a lot of stuff to add in. I'm going to be be modeling a whole bunch more stuff like this, which I'm actually so excited to do. I love doing this. Like, freaking, I don't even know, like, bookshelves, couches, like, dude, I'm so excited. I've actually got goosebumps. I'm gonna have to go find another reference, kind of probably of, like, a Mediterranean style house, because this was meant to be, like, a modern style cottage, but honestly, I'm getting more, like, Mediterranean vibes from this, and I feel like that's how the interior should look, and I feel it's gonna look awesome as well. So, yeah, I'm gonna go find a reference picture, and we're gonna get started on the time lapse. So, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so there is my very rough sketch completed. So here you can see the dining, not the dining, the fucking the lounge room. We've got three bloody couches, a coffee table, and we have a fireplace here as well, if you're wondering what that was. Hi, James. Do you want to say something to the people? Yeah, you say, hello. Huh. You say, hello. Huh. Okay, my apologies, continuing on. So we have the dining area over here, and then finally over here we have a big old stinking kitchen. You might be able to tell, uh, yeah, it's not a very complete house, there's no fucking bedrooms. Yeah, that's just the- oh, actually, we can add a bedroom upstairs, up in this- up in this room up here. Yes, okay, that's the plan, we're adding a bedroom in there. Alright, so here are my reference images as well that I'm working with. So this is the kitchen, uh, which, yeah, now taking a look at it. Fuck's sake, it's fucking AI generated. God damn it. What is that? What is that there, brother? God, okay, I'm gonna have to find another picture for that. Okay, there we go, that's a bit better. That's a non-AI generated freaking kitchen thing there. So I'll use that as my reference for the kitchen. Then moving over here, we have the lounge room. This is so nice, man. I wish I could live right here in this, like I wanna be sitting right here, man. I'm gonna model like a similar kind of fireplace for this. Probably not gonna add whatever the hell that shit is. That looks, I'm sorry, that's putrid. And then dining table and dining room, this kind of layout. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make these kind of chairs, but um, yeah, this kind of design. 
one. So that's my reference pictures. Um, let's get bloody to it. All right, you are about to see the last six hours of my life go by in three minutes. So first off, I modeled some cute couch designs, one with two seats and a second one with three. Thankfully, I was able to just duplicate the first one I'd made and extend it along with changing the colors to something a little bit more vibrant. With the two couches completed, I modeled a coffee table. That was just a single piece of wood and a couple different books as well that we could use all throughout the interior. Speaking of the interior, it was now time to head in, replace the floor with birch planks and move over everything we'd just created. I also worked on these steps that lead down inside the house along with taking a chunk out of it to actually fit in the lounge room. I positioned the couches and table and then got to work on the fireplace. It actually ended up being quite the ordeal to get these angled sections, but we got there in the end. After adding some shelves with pot plants, I then worked on placing down a crap load of books on the coffee table, making sure to change the sizes quite a bit. I placed down a light blue rug and then got to work modeling a hanging light out of gray concrete. I built basically a hollow square along with getting the stem built and connected to the roof as well as a sea lantern as the light. I then felt a little bookshelf just beside the fireplace would look cute, so I built a simple one out of stripped oak logs and positioned all the books on. I then felt we definitely were in need of a window, so I slapped one in and then got to modeling a floor lamp for in this corner of the house. Now it was time for the dining area, firstly getting the table built out of multiple stripped oak logs for an interesting texture. I also created a dining chair out of terracotta and dark oak logs and placed it several times around the table. I also placed in a tablecloth and created a candle holder out of gold blocks with a candle on top of course. Now time for the big boy, the kitchen. It took a couple of tries to figure out the block I wanted for the counter, eventually just settling for smooth quartz with diorite on top. I then went with the lazy way of making separate cabinets until doing it the proper way which looked way better and was well worth the effort. Now time for the details, starting with the stove tops. Yes, I actually modeled every intricate part of this along with placing a couple of them on the stove top and even got a couple of dials on there too. After a bit of fiddling with the positioning, I got straight on to designing a pretty simple range hood just above the stove made out of grey concrete. I even added the little vents on the bottom as well. Next, I started filling out the kitchen with some larger details like shelving on the left and some cabinets on the right out of stripped oak logs. Now for another kitchen staple, the goddamn sink. I decided on placing this on the left side, just in front of the window. I also built it out of grey concrete with some blue ice for the water. I also modelled a very cute tap, even with the handle to turn it on and off. I added some handles onto the cabinets and also got to modelling a freaking espresso machine, which was just ridiculous. After getting it done, I placed it in the corner on the counter and then started creating a little pot out of deep slate with a dark oak handle and placed it on the stove top. Now time for a bunch more simple things, starting with a cutting board that I placed next to the stove. I also built a nice square bowl along with an apple design complete with a cute stem and leaf. I placed that apple probably like six times throughout the kitchen and also got to modeling a wine bottle out of black stained glass, stripped spruce for the cork, and even designed a label for it out of pieces of concrete. I placed that in a few times in this corner of the kitchen along with populating the top shelf with plenty of books. Now we did have quite a big gap in this area that I decided on filling in with a rug, kitchen, island, and even a bit of a bar stool design too. Oh man, that took a while. Okay, let's head on inside. I'm gonna pretend to crack open the door. And uh, we're just gonna walk inside. And Jesus Christ, man, here it is. This thing is looking so nice. Here's the kitchen table. I mean, you've already seen everything. I'm just gonna be super quick. This was definitely the quickest part to build out of everything. Super happy with this lounge room. Like, I love these couches and everything here. It's just super cute. I love it. I'm probably not, yeah, I'm not very happy with this standing lamp. Then we have the kitchen. Definitely my favorite area. Look Look at this place, man. This is so awesome. I can't believe I made a little freaking coffee machine, a cutting board, the stove top with a like, freaking... Man, it just... It's so crazy. I love these little details. I love building them as well. So yeah, that is the main part of the interior all done. All that we have left to do now is this section at the top. Right now, it's... um Yeah, it's just an empty freaking whatever the hell this is. And well, I plan on adding a bit of a bedroom in here just to kind of make the interior make a little bit more sense because there is no bedroom right now. So yeah, um, let's just get straight to it. First things first, I of course needed to fix up the area to make it into an actual room and not this weird open thing. Once everything was good, I got to creating an oak door on the left here, complete with some extra 3D details to make it look like an actual door along with a cute little doorknob. Next up, time for the bed. I first used a dark oak slab of wood, a piece of wool for the mattress, some light blue wool for the sheets, light grey wool for the pillows, and even a bed head too. I then got lazy and reused some assets, and then got my ass into gear and created a bedside table out of dark oak wood. After adding in the handles, I placed the table on each side of the bed and got to modeling a simple lamp using some bone blocks and white concrete powder. I placed one on each table as well as a couple of books too. The walls were looking quite bare, so I tried my hand at making some, definitely, abstract paintings. It was not easy, okay? I mean, just laugh at them all you want, okay? They did help the walls look a little less bare at least. Alright, and that is just about going to do it for the most detailed house I can possibly make in Minecraft. If you want to download this world for yourself and explore this house and, I mean, use whatever assets you 
you want from it for yourself, the download will be available on my Patreon. I actually had a lot of fun building this thing, so be sure to let me know in the comments and by liking this video if you want to see future things just like this one, you know, where I make stuff as like literally as detailed as I can. Also, leave your ideas in the comments as well. All right, and well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.